Hi everyone, welcome back to Garden Haven Homestead. Today we're going to be planting a new fruit tree. I just ordered an Asian pear tree that we're going to be planting today. I ordered this tree online and it's a bare root tree. And there are a few benefits to planting bare root trees over potted trees that you can either buy online or at a store. One of the benefits is that bare root trees ship a lot better than potted trees. They're shipped while they're dormant without any soil. And when we received our tree, they just had some like damp shredded newspaper around the roots to keep the root zone a little bit moist. And because they're shipped while they're dormant they should transplant really well without any shock and also since they ship well it means that you have more varieties available to you so the reason we actually bought this Asian pear tree is that we have one existing Asian pear tree on our homestead but that Asian pear tree actually needs a pollinator in order for it to bear fruit last year when we bought it at a nursery it already had some fruit developing on it so we didn't need to get a second tree that year because the flowers had already been pollinated earlier that spring but this spring we don't have another Asian pear tree tree and if we want to get fruit on that tree we had to buy another variety in order to pollinate that tree. I actually found it really hard to find a second tree locally. Asian pear trees are a little bit more specialty than a European pear or apple trees where there are lots of different varieties at nurseries but all the nurseries around here only sold the one variety of Asian pear that we bought last year so I had to go online to order this one. So I'm hoping that this bare root tree will at least flower this year even if it doesn't bear fruit. We'll see how it goes but even if it doesn't flower this year I know that in future years it should pollinate our other tree and then we'll have the two trees that can pollinate each other. We have ordered a few bare root trees before um, that we've planted on our homestead. None of them are bearing fruit yet but they do seem to be growing pretty well. We ordered them all from Stark Bros. This is not an endorsement or anything it's just where we happen to get them. So here is a look at the tree that came in and I will show you how it looks when it comes through the mail. So it ships as basically just this like one long trunk and this one has a few branches and it's been pruned but there's really not a lot to it. It might look very underwhelming because there are no leaves to it and it, it really doesn't even look alive but that's because the tree is in the dormant state and it's not supposed to have leaves on it right now. So don't be alarmed if you buy bare root plants or trees that just look like twigs or branches, that's totally fine. And this is the variety that we got. It's called the Starking Hardy Giant Asian Pear and it's a semi-dwarf. Here you can see where the tree has been grafted and then this is what the root zone looks like. So it's a pretty small root zone area, which is actually really nice because that means less soil to dig up. And I just have it soaking in this bucket because um, the directions say to soak the roots of the tree for four to six hours before planting. So I pulled this out a few hours ago and have been soaking it. So we're ready to plant now. So where we're gonna be planting the tree today is right behind me in our chicken run. That's actually where our first Asian pear tree is as well, and we wanna plant it close by. And my reasoning for planting our fruit trees in the chicken run, there are a few. First of all, the most important thing probably for fruit trees to become established is probably to water really consistently that first year. And that's something that I am not always great with, especially if it's something that's like out of the way of our normal garden like our other trees are. But because they're in our chicken run, where we have like a big dish of water for our chickens every day. Whatever water they don't drink up, we dump in the morning before we fill it with fresh water. And that's a good gallon or so of water that will dump near the base of the tree that will be guaranteed to water the roots so that we won't forget to water it and it'll become really nicely established. And it also saves us from having some water go to waste. Another reason is for bug and pest pressure. Because the chickens are going to be around that tree, if there are ever any beetles or pests that will try to attack our tree, such as Japanese beetles, we do have a really bad problem with those in the summer. Usually in the summer, there's like two solid months where every single day we're going out and like shaking our apple trees and other fruit trees because the Japanese beetles are all on the leaves. So my thought was that if we had the fruit trees in the chicken run, we could shake off those bugs and if some of them fall to the floor, the chickens will eat those beetles and help us to keep that pest pressure down a little bit. And chickens are really good at hunting beetles and things like that. They have really good eyesight and we've actually seen our chickens peck bugs and flies out of the air. So 
Hopefully they will help with that if we have any bugs wanting to go on these new fruit trees. Also, if there are any beetles that overwinter at the base of the tree or in the ground, those chickens will be constantly pecking around the base of the tree since it is in their run, and hopefully they will get any grubs that are in the soil. And lastly, because the chickens are there all day, they are also pooping all day, and their manure will make for really good fertilizer that will, over time, soak into the ground and hopefully fertilize these trees. Also also the last reason, which is probably more of like a romantic reason, is I just really wanted our chickens to have a nice little like space. The idea of giving them some trees that would grow bigger over time and provide some shade for them, something about that was really nice. I like that it will provide them shade and also maybe some protection from any aerial predators if there are hawks flying around. The foliage of the trees will kind of protect them from being seen a little bit. So lots of different reasons that we're putting the trees in the chicken run. I don't know that it's the most like traditional thing to be done but I feel like there are a lot of good reasons to do it and we'll just have to see over time if it really works out as I'm imagining in my head. Fruit trees as you probably know do take quite a few years to see them bear fruit so we'll have to check back in in a few years and see how this whole project does. So here is our existing Asian pear tree that's in our chicken run. We had just planted it last year so now it's going into its second year in this space and we do still have to prune this one. But you can see that it's just right in the middle of the run and in order to protect the trees from any pecking from the chickens I'm trying to peck my feet right now <laughs> in order to protect the chickens from pecking at the trunk we did put some chicken wire around the base of the trunk so we'll be doing the same thing with the tree we're planting today. So we're going to be planting the new tree a little bit to the side over here. It's probably a good like 15-20 feet away so it'll be a good distance for cross-pollination while still leaving enough space for both of the trees to grow. Even though this bare root tree didn't need to be planted very deeply, we made sure to dig the hole at least a foot deep just to help loosen up all of that soil since we do have very clay-like soil here. And then we just backfilled the hole and positioned the tree so that the topmost root was buried one to two inches below the surface of the ground and then we packed in the soil around it. We're just using our native soil here and we're not amending with any compost. I've seen some opposing thoughts on this. Some people say that you should use fertilizer or compost and other people say that you should just use the native soil because if you add too many amendments, the tree won't have any reason to spread its roots farther. So you can make your own decision as to what would be best for your trees for that. Today we're just using native soil honestly just because we don't have any compost on hand right now. So we're gonna see how this method works out. Another thing that you can do to help your tree transplant really well is to face the part of the trunk where your tree has been grafted onto the rootstock and face it towards the north. You'll always get the most sun facing south, so facing that grafted area will protect it if you face it towards the north. I always forget this part, so we didn't do it here, but if you do remember to do that, that is also a really nice tip. So we are all done, the tree is planted, and we have our chicken wire fence around it. It looks pretty silly, but it'll get the job done. We put some landscape staples around the bottom to um, make a circular shape and then we just zip tied 
the edges and the top so that the chickens can't jump inside and get stuck. Yeah, that's it for the planting. It's really nice out today, so I'm planning on doing a dinner on the campfire, so let's go get a fire started. for holding. <laughs> Thank you. 